All right. Welcome, welcome back to Boss Uncaged Podcast. So today's show is going to be one of these shows that, you know, it may be a little bit slapstick funny. It may not be. But in reality, I have a good feeling that this episode, you're probably going to end up, you know, wetting yourself just a little bit just because of the nature of who I'm interviewing. Right. So you you guys know that I always give whoever I'm interviewing a particular name in this particular episode. I just want to give you like a little insight. This guy has survived heart attacks. He's figured out like how to still get caffeinated drinks without essentially drinking coffee. He's also a comedian. So, you know, without further ado, I'm going to name him the riot boss. So Trent, the floor is yours. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit more about who you are and what are we going to be talking about today? Hey, much appreciated, man. Much appreciated. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, yeah. A little bit about me. I'm a, my name is Trent Hudson. I'm a cartoonist. I do a little bit of stand-up comedy. I have a coffee company. We make coffee out of date seeds. So to correct you real quick, you still get the energy without the caffeine, but we, we don't do caffeine over here because I, I can't do caffeine. Like you said, I survived a heart attack. Caffeine yep. gives me a little chest pain. Um, so, yeah, that, that's that's me in a nutshell. Cartoons, comedy, coffee. Cool, cool. So you know, I set myself up for that one. Right? So like so if you're not <laughs> good, getting good. caffeine, right? You're getting so energy. like, like what, what, what is the what is the energy is it more like like glucose or sugar? Like what kind of energy are you getting from from these dates versus getting that? Yeah, so caffeine? that's a great question. So, I mean, the energy is essentially going to come from the, the vitamins and minerals that are in it. Um, mm-hmm. So it's super rich in both of those things. It's got a lot of great uh, vitamins that are great for your your skin your brain health. It's obviously heart healthy. If I'm drinking it, it's great for digestion. Um, it's, it's essentially, so, so dates are considered a superfood and yep. this is made from the seed of that. So it's just all this power packed into these seeds that we roast them and bag them up, grind them just like coffee. And you just, it's, it's everything you need, except unless if you need that caffeine, we, we, we ain't got that for you. So, so no, no jitters, no crash though, for those that don't like that. But yeah, if, if you like that buzz, Sorry to disappoint you. We ain't got it. Nice, nice. So, I mean, let's just talk about you a little bit. I mean, obviously, you alluded to you having a heart attack at 20. So let's just take this to step back. Because first of all, I mean, obviously, in, in parents, you're, you're hella young, right? You're like, I don't, even, I don't even think you're yeah, nowhere yeah. near like like past your 30. So yeah, let's like yeah. step back to like, how the hell did you have a heart attack in your 20s? Yeah, so so I'm 31 right now. Uh, I was 20 years old. I, I woke up one morning and... My right arm is killing me. I I just felt like I slept on it wrong. Just like the main nerve that runs right down the middle, just aching. So, you know, I, I just got up and walked it off mm-hmm. and I went back to bed. Pain came back, started moving across my chest and then my other arm. So like my whole top half up here is just, you know, it, it's not like a ton of pain, but it's an alarming pain to where it's like, okay, this, this is weird, you know? So uh, I went to the emergency room and I sat in there for a couple hours waiting for them to admit me. And, you know, they did ran a few tests and then they did a catheter in my leg. So they put a catheter in my leg and ran it like all the way up through that main artery in my leg and looked inside my heart. And then, you know, they wake me up and they're like, yeah, you're having a heart attack right now. And I'm like, all right, well, can you stop it? Like, they're like, no, nah, there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> so, so, so when you have a heart attack, there, there's nothing you can do. You just got to kind of wait for it to play its course and pass and um at at the hospital they can't do anything for you except give you morphine um so yeah that was quite an experience and then i had another one 15 months later so yeah 21 years old two heart attacks under my belt and um it was i I mean obviously a crazy experience but it kind of happened because so my heart condition is super rare they don't really know exactly what caused it like if it was you know they they have theories but nothing to really nothing solid um so i have two aneurysms in my led um so an aneurysm for those maybe if you're listening you don't know because i didn't know what it was until i had one in my heart so an aneurysm is whenever the wall of your artery weakens and the blood doesn't flow straight through that artery anymore it'll kind of tumble a little bit so it can cause a clot so that's what caused each of my two heart attacks but luckily the human body is unbelievably miraculous and my heart developed feeder arteries around that artery where the heart attack was so that part of my heart still gets normal blood flow completely normal function my heart operates at normal capacity like everything is amazing the only thing that bothers me is caffeine so that's kind of how the coffee company started I just kind of fell into it and um, wanted, wanted to be able to give people something that that I love 
because I started making this for myself with no intention of making it for other people. I just got tired of making it and wanted to buy it in the store mm -hmm. and I couldn't find it. So I was like, well, let me put it in the store then. And it's, it's been it's been going good ever since. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, I, I think, you know, obviously we're kindred spirits, kindred spirits in that sense. Right. Because I mean, I don't mm -hmm. know if you know, but I, I had a stroke like three years ago. Mm -hmm. I know all about oh, that wow. going up the leg and I know about the stick, yeah. all that stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, to your point, like when you wake up, it's kind of like, what the hell's going on? And they're just like, well, <laughs> this happened yeah. to you. And he's like, I'm still here. And then yeah. for you to come back and do a, like, you know, a full recovery and be on the mm -hmm. grind like you are, much like myself, mm -hmm. that, that's yeah. one of the reasons why I definitely want to have you on the show. So, like, my next question is, like, so if you could define yourself, right, mm -hmm. in, in just three to five words, what would you choose to define you? Uh, three to five words, I'd say, <clears throat> I'd say I'm passionate, driven, uh, caring. I got, I got a lot of things I care about that I want to, you know, make an impact on and leave my mark for. Um, let's see. Yeah, I got and a thinker. I'll, I'll go with those four. Nice, nice. So, obviously, you survived a heart attack, and through the heart attack, then you was like, okay, I can't deal with caffeine, and that's mm -hmm. what was the dawn of like what you're doing right now with like the coffee brand. So, yeah. on the other side of that coin. Obviously, there's some smart ass wit to you as well. So, like, let's talk <laughs> yeah, about bit, like the, the comedy side a little bit. How did you get into that? Uh, that that came about because, like, like you said, there's kind of kind of a smart ass in me because I I got four brothers, man, and I'm I'm the middle child, and we're all super close in age. There's only seven years from oldest to youngest, so I don't know if if you're listening and you got siblings, especially if you got brothers that are close in age, that's a chaotic ass household right there. Like, that is. I mean, it's it's a, it's a lot of pecking order, fights, physical, verbal, um, talking smack to one another, making jokes, making fun of everybody every chance you get. And, and that's where it really came from was just me and my brothers making fun of each other all the time, because in our house, like you, you had to have thick skin growing up. Otherwise, you could not have made it like <laughs> I know people that kind of get a, get offended at little easy things, you know, you make a joke about them and they kind of take it the wrong way. And I'm like, yo, man if you can't handle this as an adult, you would have never survived in my house. Like you, you would, you wouldn't have done it. You would, you would have ran away from home crying with, with, with like a bag full of stuff and never came back. Cause like <laughs> a lot of people thought we were kind of mean to each other, but we didn't really think anything of it. It was just, you know, how, how we kind of riff with one another going back and forth. And, and, and that just turned into, you know, conversations of saying that, for with no intention behind it of saying man we should make a tv show we, sh we should be on a reality show we should make a cartoon whatever it is and then it, it eventually just kind of came to fruition in our adult lives because I, I was working as a financial advisor for a little while and i hated my job it was not for me um worked with great people great company all that loved the people in my office but the day-to-day -day work i was like man i, I gotta get out of here so called my brother one day and was like, Hey, you want to make cartoons? This is what I'm going to do. Like, this is the route that I want to take. I'm, I'm, I'm doing comedy now. Um, he basically was like, yo, man, I would love to make a cartoon. I've always, you know, wanted to, it's always been in the back of my mind. So we bought some computers on a Best Buy credit card, some computers we couldn't afford, uh, bootlegged our software to animate because we couldn't afford that. Started making cartoons on YouTube and kind of the rest is history it led us to get a deal with comedy central since then we've worked with uh showtime lol network right now we're putting some shows together long form for tv that we're trying to pitch to some networks and we have some amazing amazing people attached with us um like we we have the original producer of south park agreed to executive produce one of our shows so that was like almost like a dream come true for us but it was like an unrealized dream that you don't even know you have right until it kind of the opportunity presents itself and you're like damn this dude works like th this dude like brought to reality my favorite tv show of all time so to have his stamp of approval and you know have him want to work with us and be like yo these guys got it these guys are kind of like next up mm -hmm. that was just like something i never even thought was possible that came out of all this and you know so but yeah that, that's kind of where we're at right now you know we were doing started on youtube landed a deal with comedy central um and then like all the all this moved kind of fast but i i kind of speak about it like everything just happened overnight but you know before we started putting stuff on youtube we spent a year and a half just learning how to animate just developing a show just learning how to write a year and a half of <clears throat> of no tangible progress i mean except for like you kind of see it coming to life on the screen 
but you haven't taken a step. You don't even have an episode on YouTube. No one knows who you are. And so it, it was, you know, a, a year and a half. And then we started to put stuff out on YouTube. And then six months after that, you know, we linked up with Comedy Central, had a meeting with them. And then like another month after that, we had a deal to, to do a show on, on their online platform. So we did that for two seasons. And then, you know, that led to all the other great things we've been able to do. But yeah, it was just, you know, we just decided we wanted to do it and jumped in head first and just kind of made it made it work and came up with a plan and stuck to it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I mean, now that you brought up South Park, I mean, I looked at some of your videos and they're definitely hilarious. I mean, I think my favorite one that I watched so far was the one with Magic Johnson and Kobe Bryant going back. Oh, yeah. Show. Oh, yeah, man. So, so yeah, that, that's a show we did called Real Ballers. And that was. You know, it, it was just because we're diehard NBA fans. Mm -hmm. So we, we wanted to kind of kind of jump into that world and, you know, make fun of the 24 seven news cycle that's, you know, filled with drama because the NBA is like it's like that now. So yeah. we just wanted to make fun of them and, and and bring these characters something extra. And Magic Johnson is like one of my favorite players of all time. So his character in the show, he's like our Bugs Bunny of the show. Right. He's oh, this <laughs> kooky, out of control out of pocket don't care about nothing all, all he cares about in the show is helping the lakers get back to to the top and he'll do anything to <laughs> to, to help that happen so it, it was you know a really fun show to do and that led us to <clears throat> some great opportunities um we're, we're trying to pitch a show with matt barnes and stephen jackson right now we actually got them on board to do a cartoon with us and um we're, we actually pitched that last week to one of like the major streamers out here so and then we got a couple other pitch meetings coming up. We'll we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, and, and that that happened because you know that show kind of kind of helped put us in that in that NBA world. And and we had we actually got linked up through a mutual friend that we already knew. Mm -hmm. Um, but that show like kind of kind of gave us the credibility to to be in a position to even you know work on something with you know these basketball players or whatever it may be. So it was uh, a, a really funny show and super fun, super fun to make. Probably, probably the most fun I've ever had making any show that we've done so far was was real ballers because it was just nonsense and 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 we love making fun of people. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely funny. So, like, my, my next question is like, you know, obviously, like being an entrepreneur, entrepreneur myself, and like being in the in the hustle, and then a lot of times people they're either inflected with like imposter syndrome on one side or on the other side, you know, it's like the shiny thing right the mm. new shiny thing yeah, but you're, yeah. You're, you're kind of like on opposite spectrum right you have coffee on one hand and you have <laughs> common on the other hand yeah, they have yeah. nothing to do with each other whatsoever so my question is and on top of it you had a damn heart attack how the <laughs> hell did you were able to manage both these two different spectrums and not have another heart attack in the process i say everything comes down to having a good team around you mm -hmm. so the the cartoons so, so, so the coffee's new. So I, I started, it's called Korma, by the way, with a K, K-O-R-M-A. You can go to KormaCafe.com. So I started Korma uh, during the pandemic, right? Okay. So for the, for the cartoons, you know, I, I work with my brothers on that. And one of my brothers, his name is Dylan. This dude is like a hustle maniac, super boss. Like this dude is damn near a robot sometimes, I feel like, the way, the way he hustles. And so for the cartoons, I, I kind of took a step back once I started the coffee thing. I was like, okay, I'm going to take a step back whatever you need me to do, tell me and consider it done. Mm. But I, I can't be super involved in, you know, reaching out to people, contacting people, doing this and that, like, like I was more so before. And, and even, even with the overall planning and business structure and everything that goes on. So I, I took a step back and was like, yo, you can handle all this. And, and he's like, we've been doing everything together for years. So it was just, and it, yeah, have a good team. So that allowed me to focus more energy on the coffee company and um so so that's how you know the the family the family business and being able to having the luxury to take a step back because there's someone here who can fill my void very easily um so yeah that, that's what it was man I, I i owe it to to the structure that i already had in place and my my family and my brother that you know was my partner with the the cartoons so that that's what it came down to otherwise i'd have never been able to do it it's just not possible Nice, nice. So, I mean, that's definitely interesting. So, I mean, obviously, there's two separate businesses, right? And then we're mm -hmm. talking about, like, your, your brother is a hell of a boss. Like, what kind of business model do you guys have set up? Is it more like LLC, S-Corp, C-Corp, combination? <clears throat> like, what you got going on behind the scenes? Yeah, so we we have an S-Corp set up for the cartoons. Um, I actually also have an S-Corp set up for the coffee. And the reason I, I did an S-Corp is because it's – 
so if you set up an LLC, it's not as easy to scale. Mm -hmm. If you want to take your business and scale it, especially if you want to allow investment from other people, you need to have a corporation set up. So the beauty of an S corp is you can change it to a C corp and have investors come on board and change things and do, and, you know, ha have that higher structure for um, ad adaptability and whatnot. And especially if you want to raise money and do things like that, it's great to have a, a C corp. Like that's what investors want to see. If you want to, if you're, if your business is in a position where like down the line, you think you're going to want to raise money or bring in business partners or anything like that, a C corp is what they're going to look for. And an S corp, you can convert it to a C corp whenever you want. But the beauty of an S corp before you convert it, you can leave it as an S corp forever if you would like, but it works like an LLC. So it operates like a small business. And then you have the option to change it into a big business anytime you want. I so that, that, that was what it came down to for us was, you know, what, what, what's easy at first S corp works just like an LLC but we can change it to a bigger corporation anytime we feel like. So ha just having the adaptability, that, that's what it came down to for us. Nice. Very, very nice. So, I mean, obviously like, you know, I think you alluded to your age a little bit. So, you know, we're talking about roughly a 10 year span from heart attack until roughly to where you are, mm -hmm. but the perception of you being an overnight success is still a reality to some people that's hearing this for the first time. Mm -hmm. So if you could really look at the scope of like your entire career, like how long did it take you to get to where you are currently? Since 2013. Uh, October 2013, I picked up the phone and called my brother and said, hey, you want to make a cartoon? The day I called him, I, I called him, I don't know, it was probably six, seven o'clock at night. Th that night, we started figuring out what animation software do we need to use? What are the steps we need to take to make this happen? Um, so, and, you know, a lot of people, whenever we got to deal with Comedy Central, they were like, oh my God, this happened so fast. And, and it did because... We were only on YouTube six months and we and we had to deal with Comedy Central, which is like crazy. But again, like I said, that was a year and a half of before we made any content, a year and a half of just learning, not producing content, not doing anything, not reaching out to people, even though like it probably would have been better to start reaching out to people sooner for sure. And just ask, you know, do you have any advice for someone who's going to take this path, whatever. Um, but yeah, a year and a half of nothing but learning, nothing but grinding nothing happening out outside of being on the computer <laughs> learning that learning the things we needed to learn so so essentially i mean it really took two years to get a deal with comedy central um o over two years um you know it, it was you know october 2013 we started we had a deal with them in like january or february 2016 i think i think it was february 2016 mm -hmm. um so yeah, it, it, it took a while, but it seems like an overnight success because you don't, you don't see all that, right? You, you, don't, you don't see the grind, the hustle. And when we were on YouTube, we, we literally did about probably 15 months worth of work in six months. We, we produced two pilots. We did two seasons on YouTube of, of a show we were doing called The Lounge. And that was what we did for Comedy Central too, right? You can see it behind me if, for the people who have uh, the, the video stream too. Um, but when we were on YouTube, man, we were we were hustling, hustling, hustling. So animation is very time consuming, very labor intensive. We were doing two episodes a week and keeping up with current events. So we were putting out an episode on Monday. And then, you know, after Monday's episode comes out, we, we do our social media hustle, right? We blast it, tell people about it, comment, this and that, all that. As soon as we're done with that, we start writing Thursday's episode. Mm -hmm. Write it, rewrite it, rewrite it, record voices start animating and you know sometimes we weren't sometimes we were ones, and there were a lot of nights where you know I'd, I'd go over to my brother's house to animate and you know we're working till two three four o'clock in the morning trying to meet this deadline and you know I'm like I gotta take a nap mm -hmm. if you can keep working keep working whenever you can't stay awake anymore wake me up I'll finish it and, and vice versa we you know working shifts and, and barely sleep to make make this happen. I, I can't even tell you how many times I have worked till 4 a.m., 5 a.m., fallen asleep at my desk, sitting in my chair, wake up an hour later and get back to work. I can't even tell you how many times I've done that. I don't do it anymore because I, I now sleep is a big priority for me. Yeah. But, you know, when you're I guess whenever we started that doing it hustling like that, I was, you know, 24. I was 24 when we started like really hustling like that. And you got the energy when you're 24. So if you're in your twenties and you ain't got no kids and I didn't have a girlfriend at the time, 
pour your energy into whatever your passion is or whatever your dream is that you want to chase because you got the energy and the time. But I mean, that was what we did. It was a six month grind like that of, of barely sleeping. And, and we were working jobs too. I, I was bartending three days a week to pay my bills while, you know, doing all this cartoon stuff. And there were nights I would bartend, get home at midnight, maybe a little later, get home at 1 a.m., work till I can't stay awake anymore, go to bed for a few hours, however long until I wake up, like don't set an alarm and don't try to get sleep, just wake up whenever, which would be like five hours later, because the sun's out, it's been out for hours. <laughs> it was out when I went to bed. So I only get like a couple hours of good sleep. But yeah, get up and get back to work. And, and I did that for six months without really making time for anything else. I mean, there were definitely like a couple weekends, you know, my, my birthday weekend, I was like, I got to have a day and a half break, some other things like that. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a hustling. That's, that's really what, you know, got, got us to deal with Comedy Central was a nonstop hustle, nonstop grind. So it, it was nonstop for two years. But once we started producing content, we never let up because we honestly, this, this was not long after Lil Wayne was the biggest rap star in the world, right? And Lil Wayne, I mean, I watched this dude become the biggest rap star in the world by just being prolific. And don't get me wrong, like he, he's an amazing rapper. I mean, you can make a case that he's the best at it if you want to. Mm -hmm. But what really put him at the tip top was this dude was putting mixtapes out every other month. And if he didn't have a mixtape out, he had a song out. So he was just everywhere. And I was like, well, let, let's copy that. And it worked. And our show on YouTube blew up. We were getting thousands of views pretty soon. And mm -hmm. then, you know, we linked up with Comedy Central. And that was that, <laughs> that, that was how we how we got our foot in the door. Nice. Nice. So let's just, just just take this back for a minute, right? I mean, obviously, you're clearly depicting the story of what happened. But if you can go back and change one thing, if you had 30 seconds to spare to jump back in time and whisper something in your ear or your brother's ear, what would you say to yourself for those 30 seconds in the past to change oh, your outcome? I, I, I say humble yourself. Humble yourself early. Um, it, it took us a while because, you know, we, we thought we're super funny. Our show on YouTube is blowing up. So we're yeah. running around thinking we're the shit, right? And, you know, we, we linked up with Comedy Central and then we were really like, yeah, we're, this show's going on TV for sure. Like we got everything going the way we want it. Like we're tight, whatever. Yeah. And then, you know, like we start working with Comedy Central and we had to really take a step back and realize like, we're not as good as we think we are. <laughs> like not, not, only, not only are we not as good as we think we are, we're not even close because we don't, we barely know how to write a script properly. Yeah. Um, we, we don't know how to structure jokes properly. Our timing is terrible. The animation is janky, but we're funny, but funny ain't enough, you know, yeah. like people will watch it once if it's funny. But if you want people to come back and keep watching your stuff, you got to have a good story. You got to know how to write. And luckily, you know, working with Comedy Central, we, we had some some great people on our team there that, you know, really helped take us to the next level. But it it, it took a little bit of working with them to be able to take a step back and be like, OK, the people we're working with they might not be as funny as we are, but that's not their job. Their job is to make it good. And they did that. But we were kind of like hesitant to listen and things like that. Cause we, we went in there, we, we had, we let our egos get too big before this started to happen. Right. But once we were able to overcome that and humble ourselves and be like, okay, we don't know what the F we're talking about. They obviously do. Let's listen. We, we don't have to cave on all the funny stuff and the jokes, but whenever it comes the structure of the story we really got to listen because they know way more than we do so yeah I, I would say you know younger me i would tell him to humble himself and, and and listen and and seek people who are better than you learn as much as you can soak up everything and and, I, and you know i did that but if i could have even started doing that six months eight months sooner maybe nothing's different but maybe a lot of things are different who knows or maybe you just even the only thing that's different is your reputation is better. Yeah. But yeah, hum humble yourself. Be be humble. Seek people who are better than you, smarter than you. That, that's what I would tell them because it took me a little bit to figure that out. So, I mean, it's pretty cool that, that you said that, you know, obviously you want to be a little bit more humble. And then obviously you're you're part of a large family of brothers mm -hmm. that kind of are all in a family unit. So that kind of then deems me to kind of ask you the next question. Like, what's your family history? Like, do you guys come from an entrepreneurial background as your mom or your dad had that hustle? Because I mean, 
that, that's not the type of shit that just falls from the sky. You wake up on a random Tuesday and say, I'm just going to become an entrepreneur. Like, where did that, that hustle drive come from? Yeah, I, I think it, it's not really something that's in my family life. My, my grandpa on my mom's side, he, he has his own business and he's like loaded. But we, we were never close with him growing up. Um, wasn't around that much in, in, in our family life anyway. Um, for, for, you know, different various reasons, but yeah. And, and my parents both, you know, work for other people and, and do the safe route. But for me, it was like, so, so now my parents are doing good. Right. And, but my parents, whenever I was young, I remember like my childhood, right. My whole childhood, I remember watching bills pile up on the table. We couldn't afford anything. We never did anything. Every summer you have summer break and I hated it. I would rather have been in school. And then you come back to school and you go around the classroom and everyone tells what they did over the summer. And I never had anything to say because we never went anywhere and did those things during summer break. So for me, it was like a combination of all that. It's like growing up, not having hardly anything, growing up in like poverty, right? Mm -hmm. And and also my, my parents got divorced when I was six. Mm -hmm. So my two older brothers lived with my dad and me and my younger brothers lived with my mom. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of the man of the house. And even after my mom remarried, she remarried a guy who was a, a truck driver. So he was gone quite a bit. So I was like forced into this responsibility, this level of responsibility really young. Um, so it's just kind of a combination of everything. But I don't know, I, I kind of, I kind of, I love how it all happened because I love who I am and I love who I'm becoming and that all helped form that. But yeah, it's like poverty kind of forced into it young. So, and like, I pretty much like pretty well took care of my two younger brothers most, most of the time. So mm. even from the time I was like, like eight years old on, we never had a babysitter. Nice. So, I mean, that, that's very interesting. So, I mean, you're, you're talking about a divided household and you're talking mm. about two brothers went here, two brothers went there. So my next question is like, wh which one of those brothers were you talking about earlier? Like the do or die boss? Is he the one that grew up with you? Yeah, or the yeah one that he lived with, with me. That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, his name is Dylan. Like this dude, I don't, I don't like, I, I swear, I swear this dude's a robot sometimes. Like he, he, he can, yeah. I, I don't even have the words for it, man. This guy. It's huh. interesting. So my next question is like, okay, so obviously you, you come from a large family that's a divided household. So like mm -hmm. now future sense, right? Like you're, you're early thirties. Like how do you currently juggle like your family life with your work life? Uh, it's, it's not that hard really. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't have kids though. So I don't, I don't have this extra responsibility. I don't even have a dog. Um, my, my girlfriend has a dog. Mm -hmm. And that's perfect because I can just kind of I, I get all the benefits of having a dog with none of the drawbacks of having a dog. Like, so I, I went I went and picked him up yesterday. Me, mm -hmm. me and my girl, we live in the same apartment building. Yeah. It moved in at different times. That's how we met. But so I go pick up her dog and whenever I got downtime. Right. Mm -hmm. Play a little bit. Give him a treat. Take him for a walk something comes up i just take him back it's perfect I'm like, I'm like that absent dad that like only comes around whenever i have time and it's like good on my watch right so like that that's ideal because i don't i don't want my own pet oh, so I, I just don't have the time for it i, I love you know animals but I, I don't want the responsibility so it's it's easy in, in the other business is a family business mm. um but yeah it, it's i mean so so my thing it ba balance was probably my hardest thing to figure out actually with balancing so many different things even before i started the coffee whenever it was just you know the cartoons and you know throwing stand up into the mix and then trying to balance a girlfriend and having you know mm -hmm. family time you got to spend because you know me and my brothers are super tight we're really close we're like best friends so you know and, and you got to have moments that are non-work related mm -hmm. Cause you know, it'll be too much, but ba balance was for me, a thing to it took quite a while to figure out how to maintain that. So, you know, for me, it's like, I, I get up early now. I, I used to be a night person and go to bed at like three, four in the morning, get up at 10 o'clock. Now I get up at like five, do all the things that I want to do that are like non-negotiable for me. Like while everyone else is sleeping, I can get up and like meditate. I do Wim Hof breathing exercises. Then I hit the gym, all that's done. I'm like, showered ate breakfast already ready to go at like 8 30 9 o'clock in the morning and mm. and then i can get into whatever is at the top of importance for work right and you know it work till i need a break mm. make time for whatever there whether it's girlfriend family you know get back to work and then when i feel like i've done enough right or or enough to take time away to make time for other things that are also important you know, at, towards the end of the day or whatever it may be, but it's like, 
I, I think once I got to a point where I quit wasting time, mm-hmm. that th- then the, the balance figured itself out because I, I wasn't using downtime to scroll through Instagram and I wasn't using downtime to waste time or window shop on Amazon or whatever it may be like we spend our time doing. So, so once, once I figured out, you know, a, a way to keep my mind in the right spot mm-hmm. and keep, keep my focus, then the balance figured itself out. And I didn't really, I don't like schedule family time. I don't schedule work time. I just kind of do whatever needs to be done in the moment. And, and then whenever I'm outside of work related things, even if something's like dire and needs to be done, if, if I'm in like in a position or in a place where I can't get to that and, you know, I'm spending time with family or girl or whatever, I'm, I'm still present in the moment with my family or whoever I'm with, you know, I'm not thinking, yeah. I, I don't have my mind wandering to get back to, cause as an entrepreneur, like, you know, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to turn it off. Right. Impossible. To, to because you're gonna if you're at Disneyland you're thinking as soon as I get home tonight and in the morning I gotta edit my podcast I gotta do this I gotta do this I gotta do this I gotta set up this interview I, whatever it is like it's so it's, it's impossible to turn it off from your mind you're now on a roller coaster you're, you're thinking about <laughs> that on a roller yeah exactly coaster. yeah yeah <laughs> you're in the line waiting and you're on your phone you know doing something yeah, so, yeah definitely yeah you're, you're like oh god that's probably it's probably worth it i need to check but i don't want it because i'm with you but w- once once i got to a point to where i could kind of whatever i'm doing i'm staying focused and i'm staying present in that so whenever i'm present in the work i'm in the work whenever i'm present with the family i'm with the family i don't you know, me and my brothers hang out. I never even look at my phone. I never even check it. I me and my girl go do stuff. I'm never looking at my phone. So yeah, stay, staying present and, mm-hmm. and making the most out of every moment because it's like, so one of my favorite rappers ever, Nipsey Hussle, like super inspiring to me and motivating to me. Like his album Crenshaw is like one of the reasons I make comedy, right? Mm-hmm. But so he, he, he always said, stay dangerous. And so that's like my mantra, stay dangerous. And for me, it's not about, being like a danger to society or being a dangerous human being although you should be because you should be a person who is capable of being dangerous not that you should be a danger but you know having the capabilities but anyway so staying dangerous to me is more so about staying ready for what, whatever is you know coming up so that, that's why I do my workout in the morning because I used to work out in the afternoon but too often things would come up so now now I do it when it's not going to be interrupted and, and other things like if, if I have downtime um, I'll do whatever little bit of work that I can so it doesn't come up later. So it's like stay dangerous to me is staying ready. So that's kind of how, you know, th- that fulfills my balance is, you know, staying ready, staying in the moment, staying, you know, present and, and, and just staying on top. Because I, I, I kind of look at life like, like, a, like I'm chasing a ghost, right? So I'm chasing yeah. my ghost. So I'm seeing this like th- this, this is my potential, right? Like yeah. tip top, like hundred percent. So in any time you, you fall behind, you can never catch up. It's not possible to catch up. It's impossible to catch up to your potential once you fall behind. So if your potential is this high, but you take a whole day off and just sit around on the couch and don't do anything, then your potential is only this high. You can't reach that next part because you missed a whole day of it. Right. Um, so that's kind of how I, I look at things. And I just try to, you know, stay, hmm. stay, stay up and don't, don't fall behind. Cause you know, I saw a quote one time that was like, I don't remember who it was or even exactly the words, but it was something along the lines of like a day of procrastination can set you back weeks or even months. Mm-hmm. And that that's real. Cause I've, I've experienced that. I've done that before. I'm not going to act like I'm perfect. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm human. I have my shortfalls too. Um, so it, it happens. And then whenever, whenever you have a moment where it does happen, you're like, damn, I'm disappointed in myself, which to me is like the worst feeling in the world is feeling disappointment in yourself, in my personal opinion. And then I'm like, I, I can't do this again. And then it kind of like reignites everything. But yeah, I mean, th- those those moments happen too. But, you know, that, that's that's what I try to do is just stay on top of everything and it, the balance works itself out. Yeah, so I mean, I just, I just you know, just peeling back the onion layers a little bit. And I, I want to mm-hmm. go back because you did say a, a couple different things that I want to touch on. Right. Mm-hmm. So in the beginning of this, th- that last question, first and foremost, right. Your girl lives in your same building with you. Yeah. With the dog. So let's talk about that a little bit. Like, yeah. How old is that dog? He's 13. Okay. So like if she's listening right now, okay. 
the marriage proposal is not going to come until the dog dies. And I'm just, I'm just letting you know that. <laughs> you know what's funny, man? As I was saying this, I was thinking that in my head. <laughs> so like, having, having a girl that's like, you know, and I, I didn't want to say it because she probably is listening right now. And if she's not listening right now, she's definitely going to listen to this podcast before long. May, I'm going to have to, I, I'm, you know, I, I, sh- I like to share the podcast that I'm on, but I'm going to have to go change my settings from like my girl can't see my Instagram stories and stuff <laughs> for a day. No, I'm just saying I live that as well, too, because, you know, like before I was never really a big animal person. Then I married mm. into an animal household. And every yeah. time I turn around, the animals do something. And I'm always looking like the oven, the microwave, the animal. And I'm not like I'm not a, I'm not trying to hurt <laughs> the animals. But yeah. when you see that what they do on a regular basis, it drives you absolutely bonkers at oh, the yeah. end of the day, whether it's them pooping, peeing, scratching, biting, clawing. There's always something new with the random yeah, animals. Yeah. So the next thing that I, w- I want to talk about like, that you, you kind of fragmented, you, you did a little puzzle pieces of it. It's like mm-hmm. you kind of told a little bit about like your morning habits, your morning routine. So let's like just yeah, make yeah. it more linear. Like what time do you wake up and mm-hmm. what time do you actually start working and what happens in between? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, I set my alarm for usually it's set for 445. Sometimes I'll bump it up earlier to 430. Sometimes I'll bump it back to five. But when the, when the alarm gets goes off, I get up. I don't hit snooze. I don't lay in bed. That's because the hardest thing is for me is getting out of bed. As soon as I'm out of bed, though, the rest of my day is rolling. I'm good. So nice. get up. I uh, like I'll, I'll give you like everything I do. This is what I do. I get up. I uh, drink some water and then I oil pull. So oil pulling is when you swish coconut oil around in your mouth. It helps whiten your teeth and it helps like clean and disinfect, too. So mm-hmm. water, oil pulling, brush my teeth. And then I meditate and then I do Wim Hof breathing exercises. Um, and then I kind of review, like, I, I have this book that I call my greatness guide. It's just a little tiny notebook. It look, looks, looks like this, just a little tiny notebook, plain, but I just write like things in it, like th- things I want to do, accomplish, live up to who I am. I have affirmations in there. I wrote down like who, who I am as, as a human being without like, aside from, I, I'm not I'm not a cartoonist. I'm not a comedian. I'm not a coffee entrepreneur. I'm not a brother. I'm not a son. I'm none of those things. But it's just like, who am I at my deepest core in my truest sense? Right. So I wrote that down. I have a ton of things like reminders to, you know, kind of let the universe take care of things and do what you can live in flow. Um, I'll review that for a little bit. And then I make a little pre-workout smoothie and hit the gym. But I don't I don't do like I don't, I don't buy pre-workout powder. I don't, I don't put anything like that in, in, in my body. So I, I eat mostly like natural whole foods, but my pre-workout smoothie is like just a banana, some coconut, um, some moringa, some chlorella, spirulina. Th- those are, those are all, um, types of algae, by the way, the mm-hmm. moringa, chlorella, uh, spirulina. Yeah. It's all algae, super healthy for you. And then I throw in like some canary seed powder, which is essentially like what pre-workout wishes it was because <laughs> it's like, actually it's fully natural and it's super good for you. It's full of amino acids and all these, you know, all the, all the things that you need um, for a great pre-workout, a little bit of hemp protein. And then I hit the gym, come home, make a smoothie with like nothing but fruit and greens, green, greens and fruit, some maybe chia seeds or whatever, but, and then, and then, and then my day's ready and then or shower and then my day's ready. And then it's like 9 a.m., 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. And then I've knocked out the things that help me maintain, you know, the focus for the rest of my day. Um, and, and then the rest of my day is they vary. Most of the time, it's like the, the beginning of my morning is almost always doing stuff for the coffee company. Um, make, making sure orders are fulfilled, going out to the right people, doing all this and that. And then, you know, doing, doing a little social media promo, being active there, um, marketing uh, focused on sales. And then, and then the rest of my day, it, it varies, but, but that's, that's generally though, you know, I, I got my morning routine and then I work on the coffee company and then it, it, whatever's kind of calling my attention. That That's kind of like why I got to stay dangerous. So staying dangerous to me is staying ready, doing all the things for me personally that are, that I need. And then I do the things that like my coffee company has to have that day. And then, you know, it's like 10 o'clock in the morning mm. and I have the rest of my day to do whatever and not, not whatever, but get, get work done. And, and from, in various ways or various, you know, if something calls my attention, 
I, I can drop everything and answer this phone call, this email, whatever it is, or, you know, send someone samples. It, you know, it's not like it's, it's all different, but the, the morning is the same pretty much almost every day. And, and I try to, I, I do that. Like I, I get up early seven days a week. I, I used to get up five days a week early. Mm -hmm. And then I saw Rob Deerdeck talking shit about how we, we don't, we don't do weekends. Like, this is every day. And I was like, all right, Rob Deerdeck. I like that. I'm, I'm going to copy that. So I'm going to do this every day now. And uh, yeah, so that, that's the morning routine. Nice, nice. I think one of the things that, that you alluded to is you do a little bit of journaling. So that, my mm -hmm. next question is, is a three part question kind of stemming from your journaling, right? Mm -hmm. Like what books did you read on your journey to get you to where you are? That's the first question. The mm -hmm. second question is like, what books are you actively reading right now or audio books that you're listening to? Mm -hmm. And the third part to this question is like, with all the stuff that you've done and surviving the heart attacks and building multiple different companies and working with family members, Please tell me you've decided to at least write a book. If you haven't, when are you going to write one? Third question. All right. I like all those questions. So the first question, some books that helped me get to where I'm at. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think probably my favorite book ever. I actually have it right here. It's called Bold. And it's by Stephen Kotler and Peter Diamandis. Mm -hmm. And this book is absolutely amazing. It's for people who want to live bold and change the world and do amazing things. Um, I'll say another book that was really great for me. I'm going to give you two more for, for the ones that I read along the way. So Bold is a book called Living in Flow. And so Living in Flow is just essentially about recognizing that the universe has your back, right? And understanding that things always work out and not don't, don't worry about controlling what you can't control because the universe has got you. And it gives, you know, I, I can point out a million instances in my life where I was like, someone's someone's watching out someone's got me and i think most people who kind of pay attention to that can so living in flow is great and i can't remember what that author's name is but i was like trying to read it across my bookshelf but my eyes ain't that good even with glasses but so the last book um that i would say was really great for me was called um the way of the superior man and i think that book is by david data maybe something like that david something but so The Way of the Superior Man, great book on understanding yourself, your relationships, your woman. I'm telling you right now, fellas listening, buy the book, The Way of the Superior Man. It will save you hundreds of hours in miscommunication with your woman, and it will save you thousands of dollars in apology and makeup gifts. A thousand, thousands of dollars. I promise. I promise. So, oh, the, yeah, so the, the next one was, uh, what am I actively reading right now or listening yeah. to? I listen to audiobooks all the time, especially living in LA. Traffic doesn't bother me anymore because I have an Audible subscription. But so I just got, I can't wait to read this book. I just got this. I haven't started it yet because right now I'm more focused on business and sales books. But the marathon don't stop. Life and times of Nipsey Hustle. I can't wait to start that. Um, but right now I'm listening to Traffic Secrets by Russell Brunson. So I, I've listened to all of Russell Brun Brunson's audiobooks. I've either listened to or read pretty much everything he's written. This is actually a book that I've already listened to before. But yeah. if you have an e-commerce business, Russell Brunson, you have to listen to his books. Um, I, I would say as far as my business goes, the reason that I've been able to have success with my coffee company is two, two reasons. Number one, there's another book here that I have called Launch by Jeff Walker. Launch is an amazing book for anyone looking to start a company. Um, read this book before you launch, <laughs> not after. Um, and then, so yeah, Launch and all, all the books by Russell Brunson, Traffic Secrets, Dot Com Secrets. Um, all those are great. So th those books were definitely like the most beneficial that I've read as far as, you know, building my business um dear founder is pretty good because it kind of it's by maynard webb it's got um just a ton of questions from like that that you're going to ask yourself when you're trying to start your business and it's got answers from real real founders and things like that so that's great um am i going to write a book i am going to write a book i have it's I'm, I'm not in a rush to publish mm -hmm. it's nowhere near ready um i'm not in a rush to write it i'm like realistically, probably a couple years, maybe I want to wait until I've reached a point to where I have a little bit more credibility, a little bit more clout, a little bit more success. That way people can be like, okay, this guy definitely knows what he's talking about. And, you know, I probably could right now, 
but it's for me it's like I, I I don't feel that like I don't feel imposter syndrome in syndrome by any means but at the same time I'm like if I wrote a book I already have a title I've already started outlining it um all that but yeah it's just the, the timing isn't right right now I'll, I'll just go with that but yeah give, give it probably two or two or maybe three years and it'll it'll be ready to roll yeah I mean I think with the whole book thing like I, I was exactly where you were at one time it's kind of like thinking mm-hmm. about it and then I wrote one book that I wrote two books and then like now I'm up to mm-hmm. eight books right so wow, nice. once you get to like that 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 it's not necessarily that the world is ready for it or not ready for it. It's mm-hmm. just creating that content and the way yeah. you're speaking, your content's evergreen. So once you hit mm-hmm. that plateau that you're planning to go to, it'll yeah. be like the classics. They'll they'll read your new books then, yeah, and then they'll yeah. go back through and read all your books all the way back. So you're leaving like this this trail of information so they can kind of go back in time mm-hmm. and become you put, you know, yeah. put themselves in your shoes. That's just the way I look at it. So I was like, you know what? No, that, that's I an amazing produce- way to look at it. I love that. Yeah. That's, that's that's the way I should be looking at it. You just changed my whole mindset about it. Yeah, I mean, I would just say, I mean, just, just listening to you speak and listen to your story, I would definitely, you know, I would say get that book out sooner than later and just, just yeah. leave this, this trails, man. I mean, the way I look yeah. at it is you could do a book per year, a book per month, whatever it is, until the last day you died and you end up with like 60, 80, 90 books. Mm-hmm. And you had all your thought processes throughout that time yeah. in existence forever, so... Yeah, yeah that, that's that's why I journal and I, and I love to draw too. I mean, drawing was always like my first love. I love art, but like I, I have tons of old sketchbooks going back as far as yep. as far as far as like when I was 18 years old. And it's literally like you can see inside. It's like having a time machine. You can look into into your mindset, into your life, mm-hmm. and into it, it takes you back to those moments. I think it's like everyone should journal, even uh, aside from what I just told you, there's a hundred million reasons why you should journal just. Yeah. Like it's, 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 it's great for your brain. It's great for your creativity. It's great for having clarity in your life. It, it's great for your emotional state, your everything. And I totally agree with you, man. That's like my last book was a journal book. You know, I created mm-hmm. a book nice. for like my, my book club and I wanted to help people to like get the information and take action on what they're reading. Cause the problem with reading in general is you will read a content, you get excited. Just like you talk about traffic secrets. Traffic yeah. secrets is not a book that you can read once. It's not a book no. that you can read once to take action. You have to read yeah. like, chapter by chapter take yeah. action chapter by yeah, chapter yeah definitely, definitely. so but putting that out there so i mean i'm definitely happy that you're into journaling as well so it kind of leads me to my next question like you, you're talking about like this journaling you're talking about like you know you was drawing pictures and it's kind of like seeing what your mind was like 10 mm-hmm. 15 20 years ago so where do you see yourself 20 years from now 20 years from now i see myself you know being being fairly hands-off with the coffee company actually like mostly hands off with the coffee company still still producing tv shows movies um and and and, and giving back in, in profound ways I, I have a charity that i wanted to start last year um covid kind of derailed it because it's a experiential charity um we got to fly people places kind of do things in a way that kind of covid is me- messing up a little bit right now so but yeah, that, that, that's it. You know, just, just you know, ha- having having control of my time, kind of on- honestly doing whatever I want to do whenever I want to do it and, and giving back. That, that's where I see myself 20 years from now. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. So, I mean, with, with the coffee thing, I, I don't know if you had, I had an episode that was earlier this year with two coffee founders. Right. And mm-hmm. they have a coffee packing out of um, Virginia and okay. they do like the the Carex, like they do like the C-cup. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you're interested in that, but if you get a chance, I would say definitely you want to listen to the episode and then I, I can mm-hmm. definitely make that connection because, I mean, that, that's what they do. They pack mm-hmm. and they distribute coffee. But, you know, yeah. obviously you have a, a coffee niche that they probably or anyone else in the network hasn't really heard of yet. So, you know, to using like that particular fruit to, to mm-hmm. grind up the beans, yeah. like a completely different monster. Yeah. So I definitely want to connect you with them if, if you're interested. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm going to be honest with you, though. I, I already kind of have that rolling, <laughs> except th- this company's in San Diego. Which is great gotcha. because I don't have to ship my product all the way to you said Virginia. Yep, on the side yeah. of the coast. Yeah, that, that's that's a, that's a lot of money to ship that over there. I can get it to San Diego for no money, not no gotcha. money, but cool. That, that's that's like two hours away versus that's a yeah that's, three, that's three thousand mile that. drive. That that'll cost me a lot of money for that much freight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in due time, right? I mean, obviously, you starting yeah. off on one coast, and eventually, you know, you're talking about probably absolutely a hundred, a hundred percent, and you know that that would be a dream. If 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 I was doing too much for this company in San Diego to 
to handle that'd be yeah amazing amazing got it so like going to like my, my next question right so obviously you have software that you use for the creativity side and the mm-hmm. animation and the editing. And then obviously you probably have a lot of software that you use for like your logistics side for the coffee. Mm-hmm. If you don't mind dropping like maybe one or two particular software that you use that you wouldn't be able to do what you do without having access to it. Yeah, absolutely. So for, for the cartoons on the creative side, you know, we, we do our animation with, with Toon Boom and that's pretty well industry standard. So if you're interested in animating or making cartoons, you have to learn how to use Toon Boom um so so just jump on it if, if you've used other computer programs even, even the adobe suite if you've used the adobe suite then you can figure out toon boom um but an, another thing for me i use this program called affinity designer mm-hmm. and it's essentially like adobe illustrator so for any creatives if you've used adobe illustrator affinity designer is almost exactly the same there are features that i like better about affinity designer there's only one feature i like better about illustrator and Affinity Designer is a one-time purchase price, 50 bucks. Mm. And it's incredible software. I actually bought it for $25 because at the beginning of the pandemic, they were running it half off. And now it's like, I, I can't live without it. It's, it's the best design software that, that I've used. I, I like it better than Illustrator. Is it vector-based? Uh, what'd you say? Is it vector-based? Yeah, but they, but they do have uh, one that's also like Photoshop too. It's called Affinity Photo. It's 55 bucks has all the capabilities of Photoshop. It's amazing software. I just don't really use the photo aspect of it. I mostly use illustrator type vector designs because it's like super simple. And I just use it to make social media posts like my infographics and things gotcha. like that. Um, another one. Yeah, I, I don't have anything for the, for the coffee company that's like, I can't live without this because everything that I use is like simple and it's, you know, products that have, like like QuickBooks, for instance, I'd say QuickBooks because like that that makes you know keeping track of my expenses easy. Um, but uh, everything else, you know, I, I would say the the thing that I use the very most, more than anything else, is Pages. Which, mm-hmm. if you don't have an Apple computer, it's essentially like Microsoft Word, except for it's for Apple products. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it syncs automatically. I don't have to. I never have to click save. I never do anything. And it saves across my, my phone, my iPad, my computer. And pages is where I take all my notes for all my jokes, all my comedy, all my TV show ideas, all my notes for my, my coffee. So a, a good note taking app that syncs across devices is a, a must. And it doesn't necessarily for me have to be pages. There's other options out there, but that came with my devices. So a, a, a note taking app that'll sync across devices for number one most important for me actually nice nice so i mean obviously going into like final words of wisdom right and obviously i think you're talking to multiple different audiences right you're talking Mm -hmm. to younger kids that probably want to become cartoon artists or want to become youtubers but you're also talking to probably like middle-aged america as well that's kind of like this dude has created Mm -hmm. coffee and i want to get into coffee brewing i want to get into Mm -hmm. a coffee shop so you're on both sides of the spectrum so what insightful words of wisdom would you give to someone that's an entrepreneur in either one of these age groups if you had five minutes or 30 seconds to tell them something, what would you say to them? Start. And, and I know it sounds cliche, but just jump in head first. Like, don't don't worry about anything. You're going to figure everything out as long as you go. So so my girl is starting a candle company and she's going to launch soon. And I was in here, you know, we're having kind of a business discussion and she's saying, you know, I, and she, she starts asking questions about like, well, how do you keep track of inventory how do you keep track of your accounting and blah 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 blah. i'm I'm giving her all this information and i'm like you know you're i'm letting her know you're capable of all this like this is nothing you can't handle like i've seen you do harder things than this and so she's you know sitting here and at one point she says i know it's a lot of a lot of planning and organizing and writing things down i said baby f all that no don't worry about any of that sell candles nothing else matters sell candles Mm -hmm. like you're everything else you're going to figure it out as you go you'll you'll run into the problem and figure it out very quickly because none of the other problems are hard they don't take any time it takes a few minutes of google research to figure out what accounting software you're going to use it takes a few minutes of google research to figure out most things you know what takes way more than a few minutes to figure out is how to sell so i'm like baby sell candles don't worry about anything else and like for for the examples that you know i can talk about for just jump in when we decided to do cartoons, 
didn't know how to make cartoons, didn't know how to animate, didn't know how to write jokes properly, didn't even know anyone who was doing this. We just was like, okay, we can figure it out. And we did. When I started my coffee company, I came up with the idea on a Monday and mm -hmm. three Mondays later, I had a website where you could buy my coffee. In three weeks, I thought like, okay, I'm gonna sell this coffee. Where am I gonna get my supply from? Found a supplier after talking to a bunch of people, even took the time to tour a couple date farms, found a supplier, found some janky bags on Amazon. This was my first coffee bag. This like white cardboard, like janky coffee bag. This was it. I bought 50 of these, sold them all except one. I kept one. And, and that all went into, I just put it back in my business. And now like my bags look like this, like they're super nice. So these gold bags, like beautiful, like you, you figure everything out as you go. And so I think what, what I see holding more people back than anything is fear. It's not that they can't figure things out. It's not that they ran into a little snag that derailed their business. It's fear, fear, fear to start or maybe fear to expand. So just jump in. If, if I can do it, you can do it. I'm not special. I'm just a guy who knows he can't. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's the only difference between me and, and, you know, someone else who's not doing what I'm doing because they're scared. And I, I just always knew that whatever it is I want to do in my life, I can do it. If I want to be an actor, I'll be an actor. Like outside of being a professional athlete, I don't, that requires a level of God given talent that I wasn't blessed with. But I mean, I'm, I'm like average, I'm a little above average, but nowhere. Like, come on, professionals are, I'm, I'm not one of the best 400 best basketball players in Los Angeles, let alone the world. Like, I'm not going to be an NBA player, but anything else, like if I want to be a rocket scientist, actor, uh, a doctor, it doesn't matter. Like I can do it. And that was just, that's how I've felt my whole life. So it was just, if I jump into something, I can figure it out. And if I can do it, anyone else can do it too. And it's not, you don't have to figure everything out on your own. Like most things that I know, I didn't figure out on my own. I went to someone who already knew like that, that's, you know, whether it be in a book that I read or, you know, I met someone in real life or I reached out to someone who I knew was doing things that I wanted to do. Um, so just jump in and you'll figure it out. Don't don't let the other stuff hold you back. Like if it's something you really want to do, you know, the, the old cliche where there's a will, there's a way. And that's like as, as real as it gets. Just jump in and you'll figure it out. Have, have the confidence in yourself because I, I see. Okay, okay, let me let me say this. I see comedians making a living doing comedy who are not funny. Oh. If they can do that, you can do whatever it is you want to do. You know what it is? They're great at writing a joke because they read books about how to write and do comedy and do stand up comedy. They, they just did the research. They put in the work. But there's a lot of people that are making a living, not like the super duper stars. I mean, obviously, those guys are, are funny, but there's people that are making a living doing stand up comedy that are not funny. And it's just because they they just kind of cracked the code and, and figured out how to do it. And if they can do it, you know, I can do it. You can do it. So just don't don't, don't worry. L leave the worrying to the warriors. Like the, the more you worry, the more negativity you're going to pull into your life, the more the more like sidetracked you're going to get. So you just understand, like, that's why I talk about that book, Living in Flow. Just know the universe has got you. And if, if you're working towards something, the universe is going to make it happen. So mm -hmm. I also read The Alchemist because it talks a lot about that. And I'll say when, whenever I find myself putting more energy into my business, other things come from different areas that I was not putting energy into. So I started putting a ton of energy into social media and, you know, my direct to consumer sales recently. I put started putting extra energy into that. And then like this week, I had phone calls with two different people about wholesaling my coffee in their store and one person who may want to help me distribute it. And, and that, that just came. I, I don't know how it works, but those things don't happen when I'm being any kind of showing any kind of laziness or not putting the energy toward it that I need to. But when I'm putting the energy toward it, good things come out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, totally agree with you. So, I mean, with that being said, I mean, if somebody wants to reach out to you to try out your coffee, if they want to figure out, like, you know, where is your comedy skits at or, or mm -hmm. your YouTube channel, like, how do they get in contact with you online? Yeah, so if, if you want to check out the coffee, it's called Korma. You can go to KormaCafe.com. That's Korma with a K. So K-O-R-M-A, Cafe. Um, if you want to check out, like, any, any of the, the funny stuff, um, you can search Riot Comedy on Instagram or YouTube. 
Um, you can search The Lounge Cartoon on YouTube. You can search The Lounge on Comedy Central's website. Uh, check out some pretty funny stuff there. If, if you want to reach out to me, um, my Instagram is Trenton Hudson. And if you jump in my DMs, I see that all, if you have like legit questions, I'll answer anything. I don't, I'm not that dude who's, I don't, I don't really brush people off. If, if you want some info or anything, I, you know, and also I'm going to start putting some stand up comedy on there soon. Now that Los Angeles is somewhat open for, for the comedy scene. Nice. Nice. Cool. Cool. So I got a couple bonus questions for you. Right. And I, I think this one will be interesting because I, again, you're on both sides of the spectrum, right? Mm-hmm. If you could spend 24 hours with anyone, dead or alive, uninterrupted for those 24 hours, who would it be and why? Uh, I think I would probably go with Elon Musk because I think of myself as somewhat of a visionary. So like that, that's why me and my brother Dylan works so well together because they say, you know, like a visionary needs their, their like super hustler. And that's what he is. So like I, I'm like a great idea man and he's a great like hustler like like I said he's like a robot and and Elon Musk is like a visionary and and I love that you know I I know he's got his flaws you can say which one about this or that but at the same time this man is changing the world and he's he's changing the world in ways that no one else is even coming close to and another thing is I I don't I don't want to die on earth I want to die on Mars so whenever I'm reaching the end of my life I'm I'm out of here I'm moving to Mars so Elon Musk would be the guy that I would I would hang with for for a day yeah, I definitely concur with that. I mean, I've had that answer a couple of different times on the show. And we talked about Elon multiple mm-hmm. different times. And it's just kind of like, you know, it's like his strategy. Like, right? uh, obviously, I think he's obviously way on the spectrum, whether whether you want to believe <laughs> yeah. it or not, right? But yeah. the dude, he, he went from finance to then taking finance and then jumped, uh, you know, 10, 20 years, started creating mm-hmm. autonomous cars. And then out of the autonomous cars, then he's creating like power cells. And these power cells is what's feeding them to go to Mars, which is like yeah. dude had to wake up on a random Tuesday at 15 and said, this is what my plan is going to be. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, going into closing, man, I always like to close out like every episode by giving the microphone to whoever I'm interviewing and, and you know, the show becomes yours and you interview me. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask me? Oh man. I, I wish you'd let me know ahead of time. I would, I would have had some great stuff written down already. You know, I'll, I'll say like this, this is why I, I, I quit journalism school because I didn't like interviewing people and finding stories and stuff. I was like, I'm, I'm done with this stuff. Um, I definitely quit. Where can I find your books at? So you could definitely, um, they're all on Amazon. So on, okay, cool, cool. I'll, I'll just search your name and that'll give me everything I need. Yep. And, or and Boston your, Cage. You could put Boston Cage on Amazon too and they'll come Oh, up. okay, cool, cool. Dope. I'll do that. One last question for you. Yeah. When you, when you were writing your first book, mm-hmm. how, so for me, it's like, I'm, I'm not sure if the timing's right or whatever it is. Like, was there anything that like pushed you into like, this, this is the right time. This I'm going to write this book. I, I feel the, I feel the need, like what kind of compelled you to like jump in when you did? So I was more raunchy with my first book. So my first book, this okay. is the first book, right? Okay. And I was just, I, okay, was, put, yeah, nice. I was pushing the envelope and yeah. I was like, it's my first book. I've never written anything. I grew up in high school, hating books and, and not mm-hmm. even reading. And I was like, okay, I'm going to write a success book, a strategy mm-hmm. book. What, what can I put to put me out there? That's a little bit different. So I created yeah, that yeah. book and then, you know, I created volume one, I created volume two and I wrote 12 volumes and I only released the first two. Of them. Nice. And I was like, okay, yeah. cool. This is, this is good. But then I started hitting with like the algorithm problems and the marketing problems. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, how can I still be a little bit, you know, not risque, but more bold. And then that's when I had the stroke. So like after I came out of the stroke, it was kind of like, yeah. oh, now like the light bulb went off. I was like, I'm going to yeah, create yeah. this book. I'm going to create that. I'm going to create this Boston cage. I'm going to become SA mm-hmm. Grant. So then everything just kind of evolved from that. But, you know, I yeah. took these books. These books are not even for sale. The audio books are, but the mm-hmm. original books are not for sale. Cause like that was like the dawn. And then yeah. once I came out of being reborn, that's when I had like all this branded stuff that I have now. Nice. Okay, cool, cool. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. So for you, I would just, I would just, yeah, I would just jump it, man. Just yeah. again, the beauty of, of creating books is that you can take them off the shelves whenever you want. You can <laughs> relaunch them, rebrand yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. You, if you sell a hundred copies, that's a hundred people that has that physical book. And then mm. if you rebrand and rejump and rewrite and recreate it. Then you could do it three years later and then have a yeah. hundred thousand people buy that book. So yeah. as long as that content's evergreen, it's always going to be value add to put mm. it on the market. And then Stephen King is a great example of that. Like this dude's been writing yeah. books ever over and over again. Right. So mm-hmm. cool. Right, cool. Cool. 
Yeah, so I mean, I definitely appreciate you coming on the show today, man. Like, I, I knew it was going to be an interesting episode just because of your, your diversity of your background. I mean, yeah, it's I not every day I get to interview someone that has two sides of, to, to the coin. You know, one is more on the creative that was, that side, was, and one is more analytical. That that that, that was different for me, man. Because like the the cartoons and everything, that was always you know we're, we're selling cartoons and stuff, but we're selling cartoons to other businesses. So the coffee was a completely different world. I never did any kind of you know direct to consumer type consumer mm-hmm. good like that. So it, it was crazy to jump into different to jump into i had no clue what i was doing and just have figured everything out as i went hmm. but it's been super fun like i love every second of it um so i'm so glad i did it and like even like aside from the money just the experience i love yeah. you know a, a challenge and this has been like the most challenging thing way way harder than learning how to animate and make cartoons gotcha gotcha well yeah i mean you're still young man so i, I look at it yeah. as you know 15 years from now, 10 years from now, you probably be completely doing something completely different than what you're doing right now. Most likely. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I definitely appreciate you coming on the show today. And I think it was definitely a fulfilling and, and, and value add episode, man. I definitely appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate you having me, man. Thanks a lot. Great. S.A. Grant over and out.